Okay, here we go. So, welcome to the Polish Hill Solar Project um, for uh, pghgreenhouse.org. Brian Sklocki is going to be a uh, solar panel installation for uh, 329 Hancock Street here on Polish Hill. And uh, I'm just going to give you a quick introductory video today. This is day one. Beautiful, snowy, overcast day in Pittsburgh. Um, of course, uh, but don't worry about that. That'll that'll clear away just as soon as the earth comes back around. Um, and I'm going to go over some of the stuff I have here today and what the general plan is and some of the tools that are needed to do this. It's our first time doing this, so let's. Uh, we're here at uh, Blue Dog Homes compound estate, and I got everything lined up finally. Uh, about two weeks ago, I ran into uh, my neighbor professor at CMU runs a solar decathlon. He said, yeah, we run our we run our construction site off the of solar every year. We just have six panels on a trailer and we can provide 20 amps for eight hours a day to our construction site. We beat up these batteries and we have great panels. And So I said, well, okay, well, I'm doing my construction site. I'm going to do it even though I don't have a roof yet and get these things onto a roof and and we won't have to pay uh, Duquesne Light a cent. Uh, they'll have to pay us while we're doing construction. So let's get started. Uh, we've got these uh, Four of these, there's three more in the basement, these huge 230 watts, uh, 36 volt Canadian solar uh, panels here. The MC4 connector, of course. And we're going to, oh, almost had a technical foul there. We're going to get these mounted uh, temporarily uh, south facing. You can't tell, but there's actually sun over there somewhere. Um, got some Unistrut here. To get that temporarily mounted onto. Uh, some plywood. We're going to just build a, a ghetto mount temporarily. Uh, wire those up in a hybrid series parallel circuit. Um, main core components that we're going to get mounted onto this piece of plywood today once we clear all this junk off of here. We got the uh, Outback 60 amp uh, charge regulator, charge controller. Um, a really cheap inverter for the time being, 2200 watt Xantrax, which is meant for like, you know, your boat. Uh, but since we're not, since we're just charging batteries, we're going to be using that. Uh, a couple of disconnects, fusible disconnects from uh, Eaton Square D. Got these on eBay for hella cheap. They're fusible, 25, 25 amp fuses in there. Quick disconnect just in case we were to blow it. Uh, but we need one for the battery and one for the uh, one for the uh, solar panels. Um, I know, kind of silly, ridiculously silly. Um, prefer the Cutler Hammer because Eaton Cutler Hammer is a, this is actually a real vintage one, you can see it's before, um, is a, a local company here in Pittsburgh. Uh, so we're going to get those mounted, get those wired in. Basic batteries just for this test. It's proof of concept. Got this at like Batteries Plus, just a cheap 80 amp hour. Well, nothing's cheap in this project. But, uh, you know, 80 amp hours. Probably have four of these when they're done. Um, four gauge wire in all the colors that you could need for a DC system. Got that from Gray Bar on the north side of Pittsburgh. Um, electrical supplier. Heat shrink. And flexi tube. Flexi conduit. Uh, Non-metallic, of course, just for this proof of concept test. Can't go very long distances with this stuff. Um, we'll need real conduit when we get this installed in the house, but it's for good. When that's all wired up and it's working and proof of concept is done, it's all going to reside in this massive enclosure, which is like hard to put this in perspective, but got this on eBay for like 300 bucks or something like that. Let's see if get the light balance right here. But yeah, we should be able to put quite a few batteries in there, like, you know, 16, 18 inches deep, and it weighs 300 pounds on, it, on its own, so FedEx Freight got that to me this week. Go FedEx, keeping the purple promise. Um, sell out. Okay, so basic tools that will be needed. All right, so safety first. Uh, work gloves, definitely. Um, let's see. Uh, of course, the one thing that you always have to have in a solar project is a really good multimeter. So here's a fluke lineman uh, clamp on uh, for the time being. So, uh, all right, what else? Okay, conduit, conduit lubricants for pulling kind of. We're not going that far today. We're just pulling a couple of one foot, two foot runs. We're going to mount it all on this piece of plywood here underneath. Uh, fuses for the disconnects. 
see if we can, oh, the light balance is all messed up. Um, okay, so the sorted, assorted selection of uh, screwdrivers, wire strippers, wire cutters, crimp, pliers, um, saw, probably should use a hacksaw for cutting that conduit, uh, level, and get into it. Um, let's see, electrical tape, um, what's I got here, mounting, mm, or grounding screws for conduits, which are conduit boxes, which we'll get into. Um, reference guide for NEC code. Uh, electrical power, thanks to Tom Cimaroli for that. Um, fittings for uh, for Unistrut, which is just, as Terry at the Polish Health Civic Association calls it, uh, you know, begging for creative solutions. Cable labeler, um, voltage tester, more pliers. Uh, GFIC outlet uh, tester, want to make sure everything is grounded and properly working. Water, I'm uh, going to need a lot of that since I'm nursing a Category 3 hangover. Uh, mini screwdrivers. Definitely want to have a socket set of some sort. Um, a really, really good drill I would recommend. If you have nothing else in your life, uh, make sure you have a Hilti drill or possibly a Milwaukee. The Walt was nice while it lasted, but you know, I'm about to turn 30 here, so moving on up. Uh, conduit fittings for PVC conduit, which is what we're going to be using today for this test. Um, Terminal rings for the battery, because it has half inch or three eighths inch or a quarter inch uh, posts in it. Uh, this is for six gauge wire. Unfortunately, only my grounding wire is six gauge. My regular wire is four gauge, so we're going to see. We'll, we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, but I don't think we're going to be putting out too many amps today on a day like this. Don't worry. Uh, definitely have some washers, more, all kinds of uh, metal and plastic fittings for moving. Uh, MC conduit in and out of uh, in and out of uh, boxes for junction boxes, uh, clamp downs. Um, enough enough wire nuts for the second coming of Christ, um, especially for a project like this. I've got these great little bus bars, which I've seen on the internet for solutions for just bridging circuits together in creative ways. Uh, they're actually for motorcycles, so my neighbor's going to love those. When he, he's a big motorhead. Um, tech screws and a variety of uh, self-tapping and uh, sheet metal screws just for mounting things temporarily. Uh, GFIC circuit, 20 amp, of course. Um, even though my, my inverter will only really put out 15 or 16 amps. Um, another cheap disconnect that's just a pull-out. 12 gauge wire, uh, the big stuff. Stranded and solid combination. Um, just got it at like Home Depot outlets, you know, like odds and ends. Let's see what else. Junction boxes, screwdrivers, the variety of bits, uh, waterproof uh, cover for a temporary electrical outlet when this is done. Uh, Got to have a kilowatt. It's marching orders around here, you know, just for making sure that we're we've got some kind of measurement. Not not quite scientific. Boxes and assorted covers, um, all on sale in the clearance area at Home Depot. Uh, here's our load. It's, it's kind of hard to tell with this damn this damn light, but this is a 50 watt LED ballast outdoor safety ballast. Uh, so. Solvents for measuring or for putting the conduit all together, and then here's the cool part: got a uh, timer switch, which we're going to want to use when the time comes for uh, for actually getting this onto the house, so we can run the, the safety lights on the construction site at night. And uh, let's see here, oh, auto transfer switch. Um, we we'll have to talk to an electrician about this, but I'm thinking we might be able to easily back feed this. Uh, this is cheapy, like thirty dollar one that I got on on Amazon, but. Uh, we should probably, in theory, be able to run all the circuits for construction off of a sub-panel that's uh, fed by my inverter once I get a real one, um, and auto-transfer to the line as, as needed in case it's like this for many days and there's just no power to be had, uh, or, the, or, or we don't have sufficient battery capacity, whatever the case may be, if they're running, you know, huge 30-amp gear for, you know, four or five hours, they're going to need some line utility, so... That's about it. Here's the panels, and there's the battery. There's the enclosure, which we'll, we'll, ho we'll pop a hole in and install a fan in for ventilation. Everything gets mounted in there. Batteries go on the bottom. Then we build a shelf, and then we'll, there's like mounting posts in there for, um, for we could just put plywood onto there and mount everything here in the top. So I figure we'll come up with some kind of creative solution. This is made by Hoffman. Um, let's see. Here it is, right here. Hoffman concept wall mount enclosure. So yeah, definitely not your residential gla class stuff, but 
I think that's it, unless I'm making some... Anyway, stay tuned. We're going to get this all wired up. If we can actually think we're going to have to move indoors. It's starting to snow here, and that's not safe. Um, so get some temporary grinding going on against our water line and start mounting and wiring things up on this. Ought to be exciting. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you soon.